Hello humans, Batsy here with a new create video, and with it, a new series. Today we going to have a look at a new iron farm I made, which will represent the start of the brand new series, Early Game Farms, with Create. To briefly explain what I mean by that, so we can have the right expectations for the farms I'm going to showcase. Early game farms will be targeted to be made decently early into a Minecraft world, but with the context of when that farm will be needed. A tree farm can be useful within the first few days of a world, while a precision mechanism farm might only be relevant later on the run. This is important to keep in mind because the materials used, and the rates of the farms, will depend on how early the farm is meant to be used, at least according to my own judgment. This week I'm showcasing an iron farm that can be set up even before going to the nether, and it only uses some basic materials that we can acquire after mining for a small amount of time. You can see on the screen the list of materials we're going to use for this project. The first step for making iron is to produce cobblestone, and for that, we're going to be using four mechanical drills. They are very reliable and easy to set up. Which will make sure the schematic doesn't cause problems, and it's compatible with older versions of Create. That will require some rotational power, which I have included its own engine for it. This makes the schematic to be able to work on its own, and not require extra steps to function. The engine is composed of three small boilers for a total of 6,000 stress units for the main components. And a set of four water wheels to power up the rest, and make sure the boilers are always active. This ensures that the farm can be run at a decent speed for better rates. The water wheels will be powering up the pumps that feed water into the boilers. Which is set at exactly the right speed to not overfeed the boilers and waste stress units. Additionally, they will also power up the encased fan, which needs to purposely be run at a lower speed. And the mechanical press, since we don't need it to run any faster than this, and it will only waste stress units. As for the steam engines, we going to make use of a cogwheel setup to speed up the rotation. That prevents us from having to go to the nether to produce brass, and the extra complications of making deployers and precision mechanisms. We will be connecting the drill at this stage of the cogwheels to have them running at 128 rpm. Making it run faster would barely increase the rates, while increasing a lot more the power required, which I felt it wasn't worth it during my tests. At the other side of the gearbox, we have another big cogwheel, which will make sure the mills are running at max speed since the mills are in fact small cogwheels on the outside. That will convert all of the cobblestone into gravel, as the second step to produce iron. We going to be using some simple hoppers to move all of the cobblestone that we are mining, down into the millstones. And extracting the resulting gravel with andesite funnels. Something to keep in mind is that a millstone won't extract the cobblestone with the andesite funnel. It will only let through the resulting items. Otherwise, the cobble wouldn't stay there for long enough to get processed. This also works in the case of using hopper under the millstones, which makes it ideal for some setups. As for the encased fan, we running it this slow to make sure it only pushes items up to this point. We need to wash up the gravel in order to get iron nuggets, and flint as a side product. Normally, we would make use of a brass funnel with a filter, but because we are not going to the nether for this farm, we will make use of some smart manipulation of hitboxes. All of the gravel that falls into this canal will slowly get dragged along the water while already being washed. Once it reaches the end, it won't be able to go high enough to reach the andesite funnel. That's because of the speed at which the funnels drop the gravel into the canal. Once that gets washed up, the flint and iron nuggets will be able to go up enough to fall on top of the funnel, and those will continue forward. Once they get filtered out, the iron nuggets will fall into the basin, and slowly get converted into ingots. Which, it looks like there is one stuck inside, but the rest are continuing forward so it's likely glitched in there. Either way, the last step is to filter out the flint with this side funnel. And the way we are preventing all the iron from going in that funnel is with the use of a toolbox and filling up all the slots with flint on them. That makes sure that only flint gets in here, which we going to immediately destroy with lava. With that last step done, the process to produce iron is complete. And I'm honestly pretty happy with this design. Sure, it doesn't look particularly small at first, 
but if we were to use a speed controller instead of this many cogwheels, and the engine for it wasn't included in the schematic, the rest of the farm is actually really small. As for the rates go. Leaving aside this random ingot stuck in here, this is what I've got after running the farm for an hour, close to three stacks. The rest of the ingots have been produced while I was recording this showcase. It's not the craziest rates out there, but this is meant to be built pretty early on. If we want huge rates, then we will need crushing wheels, and a more advanced setup. Now, how do we set this up in our worlds? Well, let's go ahead and do that. I'll name it. Batsy Early Game Iron. You will have to use the schematic cannon and all of that, for this showcase I'm on creative so it's much easier. Once we have the schematic in place, you will have to place down the fluids, since those don't carry over when using the cannon. If you did it on creative, then you probably don't need to add them, but make sure they are there. The first thing we need is water, and I recommend starting with the stairs under the water wheels. After that we need to fill the canal, where you will notice that one of the trapdoor lines is in the same block as the fan. We want to hold shift to sneak and waterlog all of those trapdoors so it fills up the canal. Make sure to add water on all of them, this is very important, especially for the very last block. Otherwise, the gravel will be able to reach the funnel, and we don't want that. It should look like this. Lastly for the water, we need to fill up this 3x3 three three square where the pumps are. We want to make sure that all the items in here are waterlogged, and the water is nicely spread along the 3x3. Three three. The water should have spread along the rest, but do make sure that every one of them are water sources. The lava needs to be where the drills are, in particular, on top of the cobblestone. The cobble will be part of the schematic so you all know where it's going to be generated, and to place the lava more easily. There is four drills, so we simply want lava on all of them. Alternatively, we can place a single source of lava, and it will spread along the rest, that's entirely up to you. Next we want to make sure that the tanks didn't glitched out, which they always do with schematics. We simply need to remove the tanks until we see the one with glitch textures, then replace all of the tanks we just removed. The textures should look connected, and it's going to show the boiler status. Do the same for all of them until they all show the boiler status. Before turning it on, we want to take one single flint and set up the toolbox we using as a filter. Do make sure that the funnel isn't extracting items, otherwise it will be constantly throwing our flint away. Then we can just grab the flint and move it across all of the slots to set them up as a filter. Once we have done that, we can flip the funnel again so it starts working, and we can place the lava, at least in the case that we want to destroy the flint, we can always store it if we want. Now we can flick the lever to turn it on, and it should immediately start generating gravel. You can see how the schematic is working wonderfully, the gravel is where it should, the iron is moving forward, and we can see all of the flint being destroyed too. Oh dear, I broke the glass by mistake, let's fix it before I make a mess. It shouldn't take long to make an iron ingot. Oh look, it just happened, here is our first ingot. If you rotate the schematic, you might have to adjust the rotation of the belts, but it's as easy as adding one single gearbox to flip them around, just be mindful of that. Other than that, this is pretty much it. It is decently compact considering it also includes the power station, and it also looks decently even though it doesn't have any decorations. But this will be it for this first episode of this series. I hope the humans make good use of the schematic, and don't hesitate to join my discord in case you have any doubts about the farm, or you need help with it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I would really appreciate a comment, or even a like, it would greatly support the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!